experiencing a medical emergency while sailing offshore or cruising in a remote location has always been one of our biggest concerns. In those situations, help likely won't be able to reach you, and you have to find some way to manage on your own. There are several things we've done to try and prepare for a medical emergency, and today, I'm going to go over them with you. I'm Amy from Out Chasing Stars, and I'd like to invite you to sit back, relax, and let's talk boats. First of all, we're going to do a disclaimer in big, bold letters. Neither David nor I are licensed medical professionals. We're not qualified to be giving detailed medical instructions, and that's not what this video is about. As I mentioned, I'm going to be covering what we've done to prepare for a potential medical emergency, as well as some of the things we've learned from those preparations and the medical issues we've encountered while cruising. So if that all sounds interesting to you, let's get started. Early on in our circumnavigation planning, we both realized that medical knowledge was one area we were lacking. We'd previously taken basic first aid and CPR training, but when we're all alone in the middle of the ocean, we need something a bit beyond basic. It can be tempting to think that, oh, I'll just put out a call for help and someone will come get me. But there are a few problems with that. One, on passage, we're out in the middle of the ocean. There may not be anybody to come and help us and the same applies when we are cruising in a remote area. Two, while there are definitely occasions that warrant getting a patient off the boat, there are a lot of actions that can be taken to treat an injury on the boat, and we're properly prepared and supplied, which is important because, three, getting off the boat in the middle of the ocean is high risk, especially in rough conditions, which is when we're more likely to have something happen that results in a medical issue. Part of the attraction of ocean sailing for us was we'd be reliant on ourselves to diagnose and fix problems. We were pretty confident that we could handle whatever came up in terms of boat issues, but medically speaking, we knew we need to get some more help. It's been so long that neither of us can remember exactly how we found it, but we discovered an offshore emergency medicine course designed for voyaging sailors and put on by Wilderness Medical Associates. It was the perfect solution to our problem. The course was three days long and was designed by our instructors, Jeffrey Isaac, a physician's assistant, and David Johnson, an emergency room doctor. They both have offshore sailing experience, so they're not guessing at what kind of conditions sailors will be facing. We covered topics like the three critical bodily systems, circulatory, respiratory, and nervous, how to assess a patient, how to manage injuries including pain control and specific approaches to illness in an offshore environment. We even got some actual practice learning how to apply splints and bandages, taking blood pressure, and even working with needles on meat. All important skills when we're managing a medical situation on our own. The course also touched on important items we should have in our medical kit, and we'll go over that in a little bit. But I think our biggest takeaway was how to identify risk and emergency levels. For example, if something happened on board and someone hit their head, they may have a lot of bleeding, plus the risk of infection and a head injury that needs to be evaluated. If the laceration is clean, if we can't see bone, and the person remembers their injury and is in a good mental state, it's a low risk injury. But if there is bone showing in the cut or the patient is incoherent, it's a high risk injury. It's important not to opt for a high risk solution for a low risk problem. That's the key and why the course was well worth it for us. It isn't cheap, but when we're literally talking about potential life and death moments, it's worth every penny. For those of you who are interested in learning more, there will be links down in the description. As part of the course, they gave us a very long list of recommended items. I'm not going to cover every single thing that we carry in our medical kit because there are 86 different items on it. If you're interested in seeing the full list as well as links to where you can buy most of the items on Amazon, you can check out our blog posts which will be down in the description. 86 different items may be too many to cover in one video but I think it'll be good to touch on a few specific ones as well as the steps we took to source everything 
including a multitude of prescriptions. The first step, we went through our existing supplies and pulled out anything medical related. We checked the expiration dates and got rid of those items that had expired. The second step sounds obvious, but maybe a bit trickier than you think. And that was to go to the doctor. Before we left to go cruising, we had all of our routine exams done and took that opportunity to talk to our doctors about our plans and discuss any concerns. We saw our primary care physician and dermatologist, and I saw my GYN. This should come as a surprise to absolutely no one, but sunscreen is vitally important to our health. We discussed with our dermatologist the best kinds to use and what we should look for when purchasing sunscreen. Of the 86 items in our medical kit, 21 of those are prescription medicines. And that's where things get a little bit tricky. Most doctors are not gonna be familiar with a cruising lifestyle and what sort of medicines would be necessary. We've heard stories from friends whose doctors were reluctant to do the numerous prescriptions that they were looking for in preparation for their lives aboard. We were incredibly lucky that our primary care physician is a sailor who has her own offshore sailing medical kit. So we were able to talk through the suggested medications from the offshore emergency medicine course with her, get additional tips about various medications, and even add some to our list. For those of you who are worried about seasickness, this would be a good time to discuss those concerns. Our doctor suggested several different prescriptions as certain ones work better for some people than others. As for sourcing all those prescriptions, we were doing all of this in Houston, so our local pharmacy was large and well supplied. We were even able to get all the over-the-counter uh, medications we wanted there as well. However, it was unable to fill our prescription for IV fluids. That was a particularly hard one to find as most pharmacies, at least in our area, didn't provide IV fluids to the general population. We had to hunt around for a location to fill that prescription. I already mentioned that we found a majority of the general medical supplies on Amazon. You really can find anything on there these days. Most of the items came in larger quantities than we needed, like packs of 100 gauze pads. And we set those extras aside and were able to hand them out to small, needy clinics on our travels. We unboxed each and every item to save space and bundled things into big Ziploc bags. There was a third thing we did before departing, and that was to get our vaccines. We made a list of all of the places that we were likely to go and referred to the CDC for recommended vaccines. Underdeveloped countries with possible contaminated food or water supplies are on the list of places most cruisers will travel. We didn't want to worry about diseases like hepatitis A or even typhoid, so we made sure we were up to date and had records. Rabies is another disease that is incredibly serious and still a problem in parts of Africa, Asia, Central, and South America. We talked through all of this with our doctor and started early because some vaccines require up to six months between doses. Now, we're filming this in October of 2021. We would be remiss if we didn't mention the COVID vaccine specifically. The list of countries requiring proof of vaccination for entry is growing quickly. We are guests there, so we follow the rules and do our part to get the cruising life back to normal. Previously, I said the 86 items in our medical kit would be way too many to cover, but let's talk about a few of the most interesting ones. Perhaps the most important part of the kit is going to be the bag itself. In an emergency, you're not going to have time to search around all of your lockers, looking here and there for prescription items or any other item you may need. We bought this large Kemp trauma bag in doesn't it just scream emergency red. It has a lot of pockets and thus space for all of the items on our inventory list. We assigned it in one spot when we first moved on the boat and it hasn't moved from that spot in seven years. That way, there's never any question where we can find things when we need them. As for the items in the bag, one of my favorites is this one, the Aqua Sea. Dehydration can be one of those high risk problems on a boat. If a person can't keep fluids down, they can deteriorate extremely quickly. That's why we went through all the trouble to find the IV fluids. But once we had the IV fluids, we had to find some way of administering it. Boats at sea are gonna be constantly moving and neither of us have serious medical training. 
So trying to find a vein, let alone stick a needle in one, was not going to be something we felt comfortable planning for. That's why our course instructors recommended the AquaSea instead. It has a small gauge needles with an adhesive backed disc that lies flat against the skin. Rather than directing IV fluids into a vein, this system is designed for hypodermoclesis, which is a fancy way of saying under the skin. The chance of mistakes is reduced and with it, the risk of other serious problems is reduced as well, which is always the goal. Next, we've got a fiberglass casting tape. This stuff is used to splint possible fractures and is an easy way to create a basic cast. It activates in room temperature water and begins to set quite quickly, so we'd have to work fast. We would definitely want to wear gloves when working with it, and we'd need some sort of layer between the casting tape and our skin. Learning when a break or fracture crosses the line into a high-risk problem is still important, but having the casting tape to help immobilize the area of the break can help prevent even a low-risk problem from becoming even worse. For this next item, we're going to play a little game. I'm going to give you a few seconds to see if you can think about what the most common type of injury is on a boat. Ready? Go. Got an answer in mind? Good. Because the real answer is burns, which makes sense because things get hot, boats are constantly moving, and accidents are pretty likely. That doesn't mean I haven't heard David yelp in surprise because he jumped down to work on something, say an engine, and forgot that those two can get very hot. So something to treat burns is incredibly important. We have Silvadine cream that was prescribed by our doctor. It's a topical antibiotic designed to prevent infection from serious burns. This is the heavy duty stuff, and there are other over the counter options that can help heal and provide relief from minor burns. It's important to be prepared for both. One last item that we'll specifically talk about is perhaps not the most exotic, but it's probably gotten the most use out of all of our medical kit, just not for medical purposes. And this is a basic 60cc syringe. Medically, we can use it for things like cleaning a wound, but around the boat, we're pretty much just limited by our imagination. We've mixed up some epoxy, put it in the syringe, and been able to inject it into specific spots. We've even fitted a flexible rubber tube to the end to reach down and suck liquid out of hard to reach spots. It's very versatile and with limited space on a boat, versatility is an absolutely useful attribute. Looking back at all the work we've done to get supplied and having faced the Fortunately, relatively minor medical issues we have, the biggest piece of advice we have to share with you is this. Be prepared. The last thing we want to have happen is to be fumbling through a reference book while someone is bleeding profusely all over the deck. Part of that preparation occurred before we left the dock. For us, the Offshore Emergency Medicine course gave us some of the practical skills and knowledge we needed. Visiting with doctors and accumulating all of the supplies for a well-stocked medical kit meant we were ready for the majority of issues we might face. But preparation, preparation didn't stop the moment we left the dock. We do a regular inventory check and resupply as needed. Medications will expire and it can be really easy to forget about them. In our Starting Your Cruisers Library video, we talked about this book, Wilderness and Rescue Medicine. We reread it every so often to make sure we remember what to do in various situations. We've been incredibly lucky that the medical issues we faced while cruising have been minor. Being relatively young and in good health has a lot of influence on that, but we're also incredibly cautious out at sea. Here again, preparation comes into play. Accidental jives can be a big risk for injury, so we rigged up a preventer. Even planned jibes or tacks can be dangerous. We account for every crew member before changing course. We also reef the sails early, so we're not wrestling with them in high winds. At the end of the day, we're cruising, not racing. So sacrificing a bit of speed for safety or staying on attack just a bit longer to make sure that the crew is out of the way and lines won't get caught on anything is the better mindset. And I know it's easy to comfort yourself by saying, oh, that will never happen to me. But there is always a risk in cruising and being offshore. We know cruising friends that have been in life or death medical situations. In the chance that something happens to us, everything we've done to prepare will give us that much better of a chance to get home safely. 
All right, I hope that this video has been really helpful and given you a few things to think about as you prepare for your cruising adventure. Or maybe it made you realize some areas you could still address if you're already out on your boat. There's still a lot of cruising medical issues to talk about with regards to healthcare around the world or even medical insurance while cruising. So keep an eye out for videos on those topics. In the meantime, if you haven't already subscribed, what are you waiting for? Click up here to follow along as we make more videos talking about all the things we've learned from sailing around the world. Our next video will be out two weeks from now, but if you just can't wait that long, click down here to watch more of our videos. <laughs> Thanks for watching everyone. Hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you another day in another bay. Bye y'all.